More on this, I'm now joined by Dorit Zelke. He's the founder and president of the Institute for Governance and Sustainable Development. Dorit, good to have you on the show. You know, on the one hand, you have the United States, which historically has been the worst polluter. And then you also have China, which is currently the world's worst producer of planet heating emissions. I mean, uh, isn't it going to come down to the cooperation between these two? I think that's uh, absolutely essential for solving climate change. And you saw in the run-up to the Biden summit today that first uh, President Macron hosted his own mini-summit last Friday with uh, Chancellor Merkel and uh, Xi Jinping. And they came out with an agreement to do a couple of things, which uh, started with the agreement to abide by the Kigali Amendment to phase down HFCs. Then you saw also the, the other meeting between John Kerry and uh, the special envoy Xia in China uh, on last Sunday, and they agreed on a little more. They repeated the agreement on the HFC refrigerant phase down under Kigali Amendment, but also addressed methane. Now, both of these pollutants are short-lived climate pollutants. So you see a, an additional strategy that's very, very sophisticated and absolutely essential, cutting not just CO2 by shifting to clean energy and energy efficiency, but also cutting the short-lived climate pollutants, because those are the ones you have to cut to win the sprint to 2030. So Biden has made it very clear, and uh, Special Envoy John Kerry as well, that this is the decade of action. And you heard that echoed throughout the speeches today. So the world welcomed the U.S. back. They agreed, by and large, that the 1.5 degree guardrail was the maximum limit that the world could tolerate in terms of additional warming. They also agreed that the 10-year sprint to 2030 was going to be essential. And not every country said this, but most of them did. So it was a, it was a very good morning welcoming the U.S. back and, uh, and giving the world a chance to win. Tell me this, as an expert, I mean, looking at the trends, do you feel that keeping uh, global heating uh, below two degrees Celsius is actually attainable? Yes, it is. I mean, there, we... We have the technology. You know, we know how to do this. And we're learning now that the cost of inaction is going to be so much greater than the cost of action. Sure, it'll cost us a little bit of money for the transition. And I'm very happy to see Biden also hosting the ministerial conversation uh, on climate finance, uh, led off by um, uh, Janet Yellen, who talked about the sprint and she's just brought on a special climate person as well, John Morton, to head a new unit within the Department of the Treasury. So we know we have to spend money at home, and Biden has a two-point-plus uh, trillion-dollar infrastructure. Okay. And, uh, let, let, let me ask you this, uh, Dorit, because uh, I, I want to ask you this question. I mean, you talked about additional strategies, and you said it's going to cost us a little bit of money. But, you know, when the president says there is an extraordinary economic opportunity um, is this perhaps the catalyst that, that, that's needed to put sort of a, a financial spin, uh, an incentive uh, to this? Yes, I think um, Biden understands that this is about jobs, building back better. You know, the pandemic recovery is, uh, is hurting people and we need to put money in for that. And the developed world needs to share its funding, including things like the IMF special drawing rights to help the developing world build back better, create those jobs, because that's how you win uh, both on climate and on the economy. All right. Dorbert Zelke, always a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much. I do appreciate your analysis.